Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do a uh, follow-up video to my Pilot Metropolitan video and show you some of the other fountain pens that I have since acquired. Um, so since my boyfriend bought me this Pilot Metropolitan, I've really enjoyed the hobby. I've really enjoyed getting into it, changing my ink color, stuff like that. Um, I upgraded my Metropolitan a little bit and got a um, converter for it, a fancier converter. It comes with these like squeeze converters that are a bit annoying to use and you can't see the ink inside of it. And so I just got um, the Pilot Con 40 converter, which holds a little more ink and is a little bit easier to uh, see whether you're running out of ink. So I've really been enjoying this pen. Um, it it writes really well. It writes really consistently. I think I showed this already in my other video, but you know, if I I've never had any hard starts, no skipping. Um, the nib is really smooth. I spelled that completely wrong, so just don't pay attention to that. But it's a it's a great pen. And so because I had such a great experience with this pen, I've really been getting into fountain pens, and I went on a little bit of a spree and bought two pens. Um, and I also ordered a Pilot Prera from Amazon, but that order got canceled because of international shipping and all these things, which is probably a blessing in disguise because this is a little too many pens for this short amount of time. So that's my Metropolitan. And so the other two pens that I have are the Platinum Plaisir in this orange color, which I really, really like, um, and a Lamy Safari in charcoal gray. So the Plaisir and my Metropolitan are both very loud, vibrant colors, and they tend to attract attention when I'm using them in meetings. Um, so when I went to a pen store um, where I live and I saw the Safari in this charcoal gray, I was like, hey, that's a pretty good understated color that I could probably use in meetings without too many people noticing. It still does have a pretty sizable nib that people um, sometimes, you know, take a second glance at and stuff, so I'm not saying it's the most inconspicuous pen, but it's certainly less conspicuous than a bright orange or bright purple pen. So, um, the second pen that I got after my Metropolitan was the Platinum Plaisir. Um, a lot of reviews online say, you know, why even get the Platinum Plaisir? It's just a more expensive version of the Preppy, which is, um, Pil or Platinum's kind of entry-level pen. And I agree. Um, I think it does feel pretty cheap, and uh, for $20, which is around what this was, it certainly doesn't feel anywhere near as nice as the Metropolitan. That said, I think there's um, a couple things I like about this pen that the Metropolitan doesn't have. Sorry, I'm trying to get to focus on the pen while I chit-chat. Um, that I think that I hadn't really thought about, and so I'm really glad I got this pen. I actually use this pen more than any of my other pens because I have it filled with orange ink, so it's great to kind of underline things and documents without having too many marks or making it too difficult to read. So the pen, um, focus, focus, the pen is just kind of, um, it's a really, really lightweight pen. Um, I don't remember the exact weight right now, but I can look at on uh, look it up on Goulet and send uh, post the link in the description box. But it has this clear um, section where you can see the feed, which is really cool, but also kind of, um, to me it's a little annoying because the feed can get dirty and hard to clean out, and so this just makes it that much more obvious that it's hard to clean the feed. But, you know, whatever. Um, but it's really, really lightweight, which I really like. I think when I'm writing with it, it's very comfortable to write with. Um, I hardly ever get fatigued or feel tired. I actually never get fatigued or tired with this pen because it's just so light. Um, the one thing about this pen that isn't great is the nib is a little bit finicky. Um, you have to have it at exactly the right angle. See, it's not writing like that, but it'll write like that. It won't write like that. If you have it too high, it doesn't really write that well. Um, so it's a little more finicky than my Metropolitan, and my Metropolitan, I think, is a little more uh, tuned. I guess, or a little more rounded on the edges. And it's a, um, it's a less wet writer than my Metropolitan. My Metropolitan tends to uh, take a second to dry. It puts a lot more ink on the page, whereas this is pretty dry the moment you put it on. And again, as in my last video, this is incredibly cheap paper. It's just a standard legal pad. So the fact that this is drying really quickly and not really bleeding through is, I think, a, a plus to me because I don't have an office that has a ton of fancy paper. So this is the, uh, sorry, this is the Plaisir um, in the beautiful orange color, and um, I think I said this in my 
other video, maybe I did, it didn't. Um, I really like matching my ink color to my pen, um, that, so I really like having an orange in this pen. So next is the Lamy Safari. So um, my two, uh, my platinum and my uh, pilot, I got in fine nibs um, because I, again, I write on sheet paper a lot, so I didn't want something that puts down a lot of ink. And my Safari because it's a European pen, and European pens tend to have um, what is it? Uh, thicker nibs for the same size. So like a Lamy Fine would actually write like a Pilot Medium. Um, so I got this in an extra fine. Let's see if you can ever see that. There we go. Um, so yeah, you see it says Lamy, extra fine. So the thing I like about this pen, well, there's many things I like about this pen. One is the grip section. I think um, when you, you know, talk to more experienced fountain pen people, I think there's varying, very strong opinions on this um, triangular grip. It, it forces me, at least, to write with kind of a proper pen hold um, and kind of make sure that I'm uh, angling the nib in the right way to write with a fountain pen. And the other thing I really like about this pen is that it's really, really lightweight. It's probably around the same weight as my um, Platinum Plazier. So again, writing with this for really long extended periods of time is is not does not fatigue me at all. Um, as I've been writing just now, I've been having trouble getting the pen to start, but that's never happened before. And I think it might be because I'm running out of ink, so uh, don't let this be an indication that the Lamy Safari has hard starts, because I don't think that it does, usually. Um, and the great thing about the Lamy's is that um, from a retailer like Goulet, Goulet Pens or Anderson Pens or whatever, you can order extra Lamy nibs, and I could just switch this out to be a different size. So for example, if I wanted to use the pen to write cards or um, write with like a broader nib that lays down more ink, I could do that really easily. I just You literally just like pull out the nib and put a different one in. So you kind of get more more bang for your buck almost with the Lamy pen because you could you have the option to have basically every single nib size in one pen whereas in things like the Platinum Plazier or the Pilot Metropolitan I don't think you can change out the nib at all I know you can't for the Metropolitan I'm not sure for the Plazier but I'm pretty sure I don't I don't see why you would be able to but again I'm not an expert so you know see Goulet pens or the pen addict or any of the other like nine million uh, fountain pen youtubers for better more exact information um, so yeah those are my uh, fountain pens I really just wanted to come on here and show them to you because I think that when I've been searching on YouTube for fountain pen videos I think people tend to have you know Lamy 2000s or pilot vanishing points things that are kind of very expensive and things that I can't I can't justify right now given that I'm just now getting into the hobby um, but the more I get into the hobby, the more I think that I'll probably end up upgrading to one of those nicer pens and make that my everyday, all-around carry. And the last thing I wanted to show you was this pen case. Um, I got this from Amazon. It was like $8, I think. Uh, this is the brand, Cosmos. And it's really nice. Um, it just zips up like that. It holds uh, six pens. Um, and an eraser, really this is a pencil, um, and so I can carry my three fountain pens as well as uh, two pens that I can let people borrow and a pencil in case I ever need a pencil. Um, I think it's a great little case, especially if you're not willing to spend the, you know, 20 to 80 dollars on a leather pen case from some of the fountain pen retailers. So yeah, uh, that is my realistic fountain pen beginners collection random chit chat video. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you're starting to get interested in fountain pens or if you have any tips for me um, as I get into the hobby. Um, I loved the comments on my last video. I felt very welcomed um, and yeah, it was just great to see people uh, talking about fountain pens. So thanks for watching. Bye.